Let's take a look at Tuesday. There are six games on in the NBA. We look at who we can stream in to get ourselves a nice little start for the beginning of Week 17. Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I have mastered the Shiva Bowl Shuffle. I'm also the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com and you can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore B-Ball, on TikTok at RedRock underscore B-Ball and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks, the easiest and the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepickscom slash LockedOnNBA. Use the code all lowercase LockedOnNBA for a first deposit match up to $100. Thank you also for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day. We are free. We are available on all platforms. Go hit the, the thumbs up on YouTube. Go double bang it. Go um, subscribe. Hit the notification bell. And of course, leave your comments down below. Six games on Tuesday. Earlier today, we did the injury update show. And in between recording that show and recording this one, we did get an update on Terry Rozier. And I just want people to be a little bit cautious about that update. Because again... Just be really, really careful of what comes out of news reporters' mouths slash Twitter fingers. Sham says, Miami Heat guard Terry Rozier has avoided any major injury as the MRI today showed a sprained right knee and he will be evaluated week to week. Our people go, oh, it's fine. Avoided major injury. He's good. Eh, not really. All right, avoided major injury means he did not tear his ACL, ACL, right? That's what that means. Did not tear his meniscus. That's what that means. That's, we can rule that out. A sprained knee, of course, is a tear of a ligament. I'm going to guess this is a grade one MCL. Just by the, the lack of reporting is frustrating. That's my guess. Week to week evaluation. It's not a sore knee. It's, not, it's a week to week situation. Grade one MCL is probably three to four weeks. Maybe it might be longer. We don't know. That is still very vague reporting. That all it does to me is say no meniscus, no ACL. That's, that's what that report says. No part, no complete grade three tear of anything. That's what that report says. Week to week is worse than day to day. Obviously, some of you will think that week to week is better than no timetable to return. I think it's about the same, honestly. And this is going to put him out, obviously, through the All-Star break, I would guess, through the end of Feb- February and back in sometime in March. I would love to get an injury. Uh, just tell us what it is. Like right knee strain or sprain tells me nothing. What is it? What ligament? What's the grade? Let's see where that comes out. So now we've got him and Josh Richardson, let's say three weeks for both of them. Jimmy Butler out until the All-Star break. Duncan Robertson, Jaime Jaquez, and Caleb Martin all get boosts. Now you're going to be, Josh, please put them in order. Please immediately rank them for me. No. And I'll tell you why no, because again, ranking things, as someone told me this great word in the preseason, ordinality, it screws you up. But the differences between those guys, I think, is going to be relatively small. I think it's going to change quite a bit, game by game. Butler's return is going to impact things. It is not like everyone rushed to grab Duncan Robinson. Everyone rushed to grab Kayla Button. I think all of those guys are solid enough. Now, I personally would probably have Huckers behind the other two. Because to me, Huckers has only really been putting up stuff when he can replace Jimmy Butler and playing as a three. Whereas Richardson and Rogier are ones and twos. And yes, Martin is more of a 3-4 as well. Robinson's a 2. So I probably lean Robinson slightly. Um, and then Martin and Huckers after that. But the differences are so small. My worry, I guess, is that when Butler returns, that that pushes Huckers way behind where Martin and Robinson sit. I think, I know they've only got three games coming up. They've got a game on Tuesday, low volume day. They've got Wednesday as well, the Heat. And then one game next week, or in the second half of the week. But we're talking longer term here for Richardson and Rogier. Situations that may last longer. And remember, the Heat have one quality game. And 14 teams have zero this week. So you do get that game for them on Tuesday. But other players that you might add from any other team into that roster spot, you might not use them at all. And on Thursday, there's only like three teams that play. It's Well, sorry, not three teams. There's four teams that play, obviously, because it's four games. Or two games, whatever it is. 
Six games. How many, how many games are on? I bloody lost my mind. How many games are on on Thursday? That's the that's the question, isn't it? Um, let's have a look. Uh, three. Three games are on. So we've got Golden State, Memphis, Milwaukee, Minnesota, Utah, and Portland all playing on um, Thursday. So all I'm coming to say is that, like, yes, your Miami guys play on Tuesday. They play on a 13-game Wednesday, and then they play once again next week. And next week, there's only one streaming day anyway on that Saturday. So I think there's longer value in Robinson, and I think there's a chance that Robinson still might be even to be used and not even just a quality game streamer. And same with Martin. Less so certain with Huckers. Anyway, long story short, all three of those guys are viable. You make the choice what makes your team better or what makes sense on your team. I worry about Huckers and Butler. But I think Robinson's got a pretty nice path. But the differences are so small that I can't be certain about that. Uh, nothing completely stands. It's not like me saying, yes, you definitely add Paul Reed over Mo Bamba. That was a no-brainer. That was easy for me to see. This one, it's very murky. It's very murky, I think, in terms of how that all plays out. I don't even know if I push that button, but we'll push it again now. Daily look ahead for Tuesday with the six games on. We did the injury update already today. So the back-to-backs, Tuesday to Wednesday, there are eight teams to play that combination back-to-back. Nets, Celtics, Pistons, Lakers, Heat, Magic, Suns, Kings. We already know that Porzingis is out for Tuesday, meaning Horford's going to be out for Wednesday. Ben Simmons looks like he'll be out for Wednesday. We haven't heard about Cade Cunningham. I would expect that he sits Wednesday. Lakers, there is some risk there, I guess, with Davis and LeBron on the back-to-back. Heat, you've already got the guys out who are going to be out anyway. Magic, Marco Fultz, and John Isaac, we need to watch for them. Sun should be all right, and King should be all right. But that is a lot of back-to-back stuff happening. And at the moment, it appears like all of it will happen on Wednesday when there are 13 games on outside of Porzinga sitting the game on Tuesday, which gives us that small optionality there. Whereas on Wednesday, not a lot. Because of so many teams on, like even though these guys are going to sit and value will be boosted for some players, you're probably not, in a lot of cases, going to take advantage of it. Let's go to our stream of the day. 10-team category leagues, I'm going Al Horford. He should play five to six extra minutes here with Porzingis out, and that makes him a very clear 10-team league stream. Just have him on days like this. For 12s, I'm still 100%, not 100% certain about Simone Fontecchio, but there's no Alf Stewart. There's no Quentin Grimes. And Fontecchio was great last game. I think he might start over Mike Bascala, and I don't know if he gets as many shots as last game, but he's worth streaming in. For the Bucks, Jay Crowder is who I look to as a 14-team streamer with uh, Christian Middleton out. And then for 16s, I'm going to go with John Isaac, who played 25 minutes last game. Not certain he does that every game, but the block and steal upside is really interesting. For Yahoo points and for ESPN points leagues, I am going to go with the same bloke again. Simone Fontecchio is your stream guy there with a healthy level of skepticism about how we produce as compared to last game. Today's episode is also brought to you by, not also, just brought to you by Price Picks. Price Picks is America's number one fantasy sports app with over 3 million members. It is the easiest and the most exciting way to play DFS. It is just you against the numbers. You just pick more than or less than on two to six individual player stat projections and you watch the winnings roll in. It's demon time on Price Picks. You can win up to 100 times your money with as little as four correct picks. You can turn $10 into 1000 Demons and goblins are the newest and most exciting way to play at Price Picks. Squares marked with red demons or green goblins give you different payouts. You can now win up to 100 times your money with as little as four correct picks. Price Picks even offers injury insurance so that your entries stay in play even if one of your players gets injured in the first half. For football and basketball, if that player gets out or goes out in the first and doesn't return the second, that player projection won't count against you and the rest of your entry stays live. Price Picks is the only daily fantasy sports platform with an injury insurance policy. Go to pricepicks.com slash locked on NBA. Use the code locked on NBA for a first deposit match up to $100. That is pricepicks.com slash locked on NBA. The code is locked on NBA for a first deposit match up to $100. Price picks, pick more, pick less. It is that easy. I noticed price picks changed their uh, verbiage around that injury insurance. It's not rebooted anymore because it was a little bit confusing. Now they're just telling you, hey, if someone gets hurt, we just take that entry out. It just gets cancelled out of it and the rest of your entries stay live. That makes a lot more sense versus your player gets rebooted. So good on them for changing it up. What's on my radar for these six games? Thunder Magic. Yeah, Thunder Magic. Um, Josh Giddy. I'll continue to say this. He's a drop. Get that garbage out of here. It's going to get worse when Gordon Haywood is there. He's a drop, but like maybe, maybe he changes my mind. He won't, but maybe he does. For the Magic, it's about John Isaac to me. What do his minutes look like? Because that impacts Michael Fultz. It impacts Wendell Carter. 
I think that Fultz, Carter, and Isaac are all fringe stream 12-team league guys at the moment. Um, two of those, Carter and Fultz, are way more rostered than than Isaac is, but the they're all sort, of, all sort of cutting into each other, and we just need to watch the impact of that and see what Isaac's minutes look like. He, he could play 12 minutes, which is possible too. In terms of streams, well, you know what it is. You know what we're doing for the Thunder. We're hopping on. We're hopping on the trail with the Midwest Dylan Brooks, Lou Dort. And there is almost no way that he has a good game again. Almost none. But that's not really how averages work. If you have a good game the next one, it doesn't mean you have a bad one. Now, for Lou Dort, it usually does. But it doesn't mean that. So maybe he has a good one. I don't know. The role is there. Isaac's the stream for the Magic, um, especially when you're looking for those defensive numbers. The Boston Celtics and the Brooklyn Nets. Big Al Horford is who we're looking at here. Again, he's been pretty good this season in the limited minutes. When someone is out, he steps up into a larger role. That happens relatively often. And I've just seen, actually, the Heat have just pushed um, Duncan Robinson onto the injury report, questionable, after Jalen Brown tried to dismember him in that last game. Um, uh, And also, I need to correct myself, sorry. I said that Porzingis was out. He's not. He's on the injury report as questionable. And the fact that he's on the injury report as questionable and Horford isn't means that he is out. Like, that is just what is happening. Like, he is out. He will not play in this game. I feel re- really confident about that. So, sorry, I didn't give you the official designation of questionable for Porzingis. But the fact that he is questionable, Al Horford is not, means that Porzingis is not playing. Like, I just, there's no way that he's playing in this game. I, I feel pretty good about saying that. Um, so, yeah, that's that. There's no Tillman or Springer for them as well. Yeah, so Horford is surely getting a little bit of a boost here in this game. On the Brooklyn side, we do want to see what happens with Dennis Schroeder. We're expecting that Ben Simmons plays in this game and sits on Wednesday. That They play each other both days. It's in Brooklyn on Tuesday and in Boston on Wednesday. I think Simmons sits that game on Wednesday. Um, but we'll see what Schroeder can do because he played like 26, 27 minutes in the first game. No guarantee that he plays it here. Also, Dayron Sharp is back for the Nets. So how do they finagle him into the rotation? What do the minutes look like for um, for old mate Schroeder with Dennis Smith around, with Ben Simmons around, with yeah, Bridges and all those guys? Can he play those 27? I, I have some doubts, but we'll find out, won't we? That's what we want to see. In terms of streams, Luke Cornett, if it's not um, Al Horford, who's probably a little bit too highly rostered for majority of leagues, we go to Cornett there, again, under the assumption Porzingis is out. And then Dennis Smith becomes that stream guy for the Brooklyn Nets, um, getting those backup minutes. But the again, the Ridley, the return of Sharp impacts because they get some backup center minutes, meaning more minutes for Simmons to play point guard, meaning fewer minutes for Schroeder and Smith. And you got Lonnie Walker in that mix and all those guys. Jalen Wilson's getting minutes. Like, how do they all play out, I guess? The next one is Miami and Milwaukee. Like I said, Duncan Robinson has popped up on the injury report as well now. So there's no Richardson, there's no Butler. There is no Rogier, and now Robinson is questionable. Now, if Robinson is out, they literally have nobody. Who would they have to play? Um, Alondez Williams? Because there's like, who is their point guard? It has to be him. There's no point guard on this team. Oh, no. That's only Their point guard is Tyler Hero. It's going to have to be Alondez Williams that plays. And if Robinson is out, there's no shooting guards either. It's going to be Caleb Martin and Jaime Huckers and bloody Jamal Kane. Yuck. Yeah. So Robinson, great stream. Otherwise, disgusting stuff. Caleb Martin, this is a back-to-back for the Bucks. Caleb Martin's a really good stream there. Again, Robinson's a stream. Huckers is a stream. Deeper Leagues is a Londes Williams a stream. Jamal Kane, he'll get some shots up. He's more of a three than a, than a two or a one, but they're, they're in strife, man. They don't have anybody. There's no guards. It's Tyler Hero. And it's Robinson, who you never want initiating anything. Although his assist numbers are up this season. It's going to be really, really rough, that one, I would say. Pretty rough. That's my guess, anyway. Um, all right. I just noticed that in my issues with my computer this morning, and my panic to get shows out, the next game, which is uh, Minnesota and Portland, well, the graphic just didn't come through, and I don't know why. But, you know, sometimes that stuff happens. This is a back-to-back for Minnesota. I'll get that off the screen so you're not just seeing the wrong info. Minnesota, it's a back-to-back um, for them, taking on Portland. For Portland, what we want to see, we want to see what happens here. We know that Brogdon's out, but we don't know about Simons and Scoot. They're both questionable. I want to see I want to see how Scoot looks in this scenario if he plays. 
I also want to see the usage of DeAndre Ayton. In terms of stream, guys, in this game, with the uncertainty around Jaden McDaniels, it is a back-to-back, so we don't know if he's going to play on Monday or Tuesday with a finger issue. I'm looking at Jabari Walker as probably the guy in Portland. I don't know why I transitioned from McDaniels to Walker, but Portland is Jabari Walker and Kyle Anderson with upside if McDaniels is out, or otherwise we go to Nikhil Alexander-Walker as the stream guy. But an interesting game because of all the questionable tags, Simons, Henderson, and Reith. For Portland, McDaniels for Minnesota, um, and then obviously no Malcolm Brogdon or Shaden Sharp for the Portland Trail Blazers. Now back to one that I actually, that's even the wrong one again. Josh, this is just a disaster show. Bring the right one across. This is the right one coming across. Um, Sacramento and Phoenix. Darren Fox has sucked. He's been terrible. The shooting is way off. I do think that there is a problem with that shoulder that is causing this issue. But let's see what happens. This is a huge buy low opportunity here for De'Aaron Fox. Whether you pull that off or not, I wouldn't give a top 50 player for him. Honestly, I'd rather someone else just deal with the nonsense. But if someone's fed up, that's where you swoop in. So he needs to do better, obviously. And then in Phoenix, Grayson Allen is not a 12-team points league rostered player. But he is a category league guy. But we consistently watch it. We watch where it goes. Royce O'Neal barely played. David Roddy didn't play in their debut. But that doesn't mean that's going to be the situation the whole time. Remember, we talked about the different phases of post-trade deadline and how this is all going to change over the next five to 10 games. So we're constantly watching that. In terms of streams, Trey Lyles is probably the guy we look to there in Sacramento. They're without Bezenkov and they're without Chris Duarte. And they've got Harrison Barnes playing under 30 minutes a night. And it's uh, downtime for Fanta Pants Kevin Herter as well. And Eric Gordon is probably the Phoenix stream. Don't feel super good about him, but he's always an option there to get 21, 22 minutes when they are healthy. Today's episode is brought to you by Better Help. Sometimes you'll need the opportunity to get something off your chest, big or small. Certain things can really start to get to you. And it's important that you let that out often to somebody who is unbiased in your life. So if you've got things that you want to get off your chest, get them off your chest and you can do that with better help. Are you one of those people who thinks that uh, sports are rigged only when your team loses though? Well, maybe you need to get that off your chest and speak to someone over at BetterHelp because therapy can be different for everybody. You can go in there with really, really tough problems. And we know that there's more tough problems than thinking that your favorite sports league is rigged against you and only you. But you still need to get that stuff off your chest. And dealing with that can help you in other areas of your life. So if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be flexible and suited to your schedule. Visit betterhelp.com slash locked on NBA to get 10% off your first month. That is betterhelp, H-E-L-P.com slash locked on NBA. Okay, so now hopefully we can get this show back on track. Detroit and the Lakers is the last game of the day. Uh, Obviously, it's in LA. It's a later game. I want to see what coaching legend Monty Williams does with Jaden Ivey here. Is this man just going to play 40 minutes a night now? He's got huge role at the moment. Um, The usage is still a little bit lower than what Kate is, but they're pumping so many minutes into Jaden. Is that what he's going to stick? I I don't know. I think so, but I don't know. For the Lakers, D'Angelo Russell, they're going to have probably Spencer Dinwiddie available to play. And again, there was a comment that came out from Pockets that said that they're going to run a three-guard line. This guy doesn't know what he wants. All right, at points the Lakers are like we're going to run all these bigs. We're going to run Vanderbilt, Davis, LeBron all together and Hachimura, run all four forwards or whatever it is. Now it's like, no, we're actually going to run three guards with Reeves and Russell and Dinwiddie. Now, there is, it's important to note that when he says we'll have a three-guard lineup, that does not mean that Reeves, Russell, and Dinwiddie are starting together. They might try that at some point. I don't think they will. That does not mean that. It means that they will play them together. Now, in the past, they've been and Laker fans in particular, have been very critical of running three-guard lineups, especially when they're small. Dinwiddie's not that small. Um, well, even Russell's not that small, but they are still three guards. Poor rebounders. So we'll see how often that gets run. That does not, again, that does not mean 30 minutes a night for Dinwiddie. It might, but it doesn't mean that. It doesn't mean he's starting. It doesn't mean he's closing. But we want to see all of that and how that impacts Russell, what it impacts with Reeves, and what it impacts with Dinwiddie. In terms of streams, Fontecchio is the guy in Detroit. What his role is, is very key to watch. Obviously, that'll change when Stewart and uh, who's the other guy? Uh, Grimes returns, and then how Sasa fits in. And then it is probably Hachimura as a stream, although if Dinwiddie was dropped, I'd be okay streaming him in. He's got a, it, for as bad as he is, he's got a better fantasy game than what Rui Hachimura does overall. 
Let's look at some two-for-ones. If you do have the ability on Wednesday, which you probably don't with 13 games on, we've got Jalen Suggs and Caleb Barton. These guys are all above uh, or below 50% rostered. Uh, Simone Fontecchio is there. Luke Quinnette is is there, who should get run in both these games with Porzingis and Horford sitting. Duncan Robinson's there with all those absences, maybe even his own. And then Jaime Huquez is there as well, who we know is going to play, well, unless he gets hurt. We know he's going to play the two games as well. So the three Heat guys are in there. Fontecchio sucks. Fontecchio's only 18% rostered. So while I'm not massive on him blowing us away and being huge all season, that's still some pretty good value, I think, uh, to grab him there. 10-team streamers, we're going to start it off with Al Horford. Scoot Henderson, if he plays, I do think he's pretty much a guy that we want to roster at this point. Jalen Suggs and Markel Fultz. Fultz is not a must-roster guy, but he's at least streamable on a six-game slate. Suggs should be rostered. You've got Fontecchio there, and then you've got 40-minute legend Jay Crowder replacing James Christian Middleton in Milwaukee. For 12s, we go to Caleb Martin and Duncan Robinson and Jaime Jaquez, all very close. You've got John Isaac as a stream, Luke Cornett, and Rui Hachimura in the position as well. I'm just going to check something, whether there has been any updates on whether Dinwiddie is actually playing in this first game, because sometimes we don't hear that. Uh, no, it looks like he's playing. Yep, looks like Spencer will play, and then we'll see what their role is. So back to that. So um, 12 teams, we got yeah, Cornette and Hachimura back the end there. Hachimura might take a little bit of a hit when Dinwiddie arrives. For deeper leagues, we go to Dennis Smith, Marcus Sassa, Eric Gordon, Matisse Stiebel, Jalen Wilson in Brooklyn. His minutes might be a little bit Volatile, depending on how they run Finney Smith and how they run Dayron Sharp. And then there's Jabari Walker in Portland, who could get a big boost or could be useless. We've seen that uh, transpire many different times. For points leagues, Yahoo points leagues, these are all 50% um, and below. Fontecchio, Caleb Martin, Jay Crowder, Jalen Suggs, Marco Fultz, and Jaime Huquez. You'll notice Duncan Robinson not as highly rated in a points league format as what Martin and Huquez are, although... Maybe he plays 35 minutes and these other guys get 26 because there are no other guards. How they run that rotation is going to be very, very interesting. And that brings us to the end of the Daily Look Ahead show for Tuesday with the six games on. Don't forget, or or thank you actually, just thank you for doing it because I know you've done it. You've thumbed it up, you've banged it, you've rung the bell and you've left your comments down below. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.